Welcome to From the Spectrum Podcast. This is a podcast about autism. It is my goal to explain what is autism. I intend to use a mixture of scientific literature, personal experience, and opinion. With opinion, I will explain why I feel the way I do and give examples. I will provide links to various references for each episode. For each episode, we will discuss various aspects of autism. The From the Spectrum podcast will mostly avoid causes of autism, and I will try avoiding the increase of diagnoses of late. This is like playing tug-of-war with barbed wire and I don't think I want to travel down that path. For today's episode, we will cover more symptoms or traits of criteria B. Remember, criteria B is restricted and repetitive behavior. It is my opinion, autism is criteria B. It is my opinion, criteria A the social communication and interaction deficits are a cause or downstream of criteria B. What gives us criteria B manifest into criteria A? Now, the podcast has covered three episodes on these traits and three episodes on the biological explanations of what autism is, even though neither episode, either the traits or the biological aspects are exhaustive, but we've outlined some critical components of what makes us or what makes people autistic. Remember, these symptoms or traits are crude and intends to capture the spectrum. Criteria B, restricted, repetitive patterns of behavior, interest, or activities. In other words, if different than you, how is society going to handle that? Will society, or will you, no matter who you are, a parent, a teacher, a clinician, friend, or stranger, how will you handle autistic people? Will you work to change someone with autism because you think they need help? Is it for the autistic or is it for you? Does someone different from you cause you conflict? Conflict, meaning Even the slightest, that quick and brief moment that catches your attention and maybe or likely causes a reaction, a reflexive reaction. That is an example of something offending your beliefs. If you say this is not you, look again. That's a stimulus response, and all humans have stimulus responses. A human's nervous system loves to return to comfort, whatever that comfort is for each of us. I'm going to start by saying I am not in agreement with the language used in the DSM-5 or any DSM. Guess what? And this means little to nothing to me. Many disagree with the language used in the DSM. Routines. Routines and plans. We have discussed they are safe and predictable. It's more than that. Examples how I do laundry, dishes, 
or routes of travel. It's the planning, consisting of every exact move, physical movements, time, what we should expect and what might happen, and the chances of those things happening. The plan and execution is it. Here we are talking about time. The plan versus actual time. Matching that is thrilling. Matching that in closeness or exact is thrilling. Matching reality to the movie playing in our head during planning. Here, this includes plans, others, how we interact and integrate, and different objects. I know, that is a vast spectrum, but apparently, spectrum is popular with autism discussions. I don't love it, but so be it. The spectrum of items, the plans, the others, the objects, need to do what they intend to do. What, where, when, why, and how they are supposed to. That plan versus actual thrill. If no control, this can be frustrating. If or when things are off plan, it does not mean it is automatic frustration. However, this tolerance is tight. Difficulties exist and physiological responses follow. Remember the thrill attached to this. This exists on a seesaw. The amount of thrill or pleasure you receive in life will predict the amount of pain you experience. Pain not limited to somatic or physical pain, but pain, meaning disappointment, frustration, and craving aspects. This is a good source of, this does not make sense, or, why would they do that? Discussed in the previous episode. And, connect this to relationships, and criteria A. My morning routines were tough during a previous relationship. They were obsessive. Remember the, the first two episodes, too. Remember in the first episode, while discussing B2 and B3, I made comments that I have these two symptoms or traits bad. And I am comfortable saying now that those really implicated previous relationships, important things to me, but I just could not see. I just couldn't understand it at the time. It was, it was all about my routines, whatever my routine was. And I had to have certain fixated interest, whatever they were at that time. And it was just, everything else was secondary. Everything else. Typically, I am punctual, but we just discuss the complications and the background of what is going on and the parts you cannot see. I think punctual is not a source of courtesy, but what we are supposed to do. It is how we treat others and ourselves. It allows society to flow properly, flow efficiently. I enjoy being slightly early, and I certainly bias myself towards action. Perhaps an EI superpower, if properly utilized. Here, maybe you can connect the propensity for breaks. There will be a need for breaks. 
That's a cert. To recharge and replenish that metabolic bank account previously discussed. And so we can attend to our fixated interest. Remember, these are not entirely abnormal, in quotations. Abnormal in interest or focus. I hate that language. It is code for others are uncomfortable about that ability and don't want to understand it. So, they label it. How about, how about you not be offended a reflex with a negative connection? How about we utilize it and bias the person towards strengths and superpowers? If someone has the ability to learn and be attached to a subject or a topic, let them be. But that offends other people in society. Okay, rant over for now. Remember the aromatic amino acids. I have a cheat sheet or an answer key for the listener. These special proteins activate for UVB wavelength light. Leptin, even smaller wavelength. Leptin wasn't discovered until 1994, I believe by Jeffrey Friedman. This recharge, this reset, needing to restore our metabolic bank account. Go outside. Get some more sunlight. Remember, we discussed this in the third and fourth episode. This will reset our homeostasis. I bet it will give benefits, at least minimize the behavior phenotypes, the struggles that we can see. This is in all of the so-called disorders listed in the DSM, not limited to autism. All. If disagree, email me. I have an anecdote. During holidays, family gatherings and such, lots of food, lots of people, and paper plates being thrown away. No, it's not a silly climate topic. People throw the paper plates away. We eat, we dispose of the paper plate. Food side up. And it loosely stacks up. However, well, two things here. One, if face down, it minimizes smell and sight and mess. But two, you can push down on the backside of the paper plate and push down to get more in one trash bag. Things like this are confusing to me. Why don't other people see this? You want a glimpse into the inside of someone with autism. It's things like this. It's just strange to us. And this annoys me. There is nothing about this that makes sense. Nothing. I see this. Feel my eyebrows wrinkle up. That conflict. Here I'm receiving the conflict and stimulus response. I turn it over and press down and get out. I fix the trash can and the paper plate stacking up, overflowing. I fix it and I get out. And that's true. Traffic flow. Spacing between cars is strange to me. I don't understand why the spacing cannot be more equal. 360 degree spacing. Remember B movie. This interacts with me when driving and trying to turn into traffic and while running. Something I notice is when, let's say a two lane, two lane or more road, two lanes traveling in the same direction. When people pass cars, or especially semis. 
they take their time passing. They increase their time traveling within feet of another vehicle or even a semi. It's wild. Why would you travel within feet of a semi? Time the passing so you can accelerate and pass past the car or semi without staying there side by side with it and increasing your time next to it. Now, before your reflexive thought, whenever I say time and accelerate, within speed limit, forgiveness or acceptance, of course, and pass the vehicle on, or especially the semi, as fast as possible. We learn about distances of following the vehicle in front of us. We learn about that. That's pretty common information. You don't want to follow too close, but it's a 360 degree consideration. We need to watch out 360. I'm blown away by people passively passing semis, increasing time and distance being within feet of it. Maybe they heard the previous episode and they want to high five the other driver. Researching items. Researching items I want to purchase. And this is no different than the fixated interest. It is consuming. I mean, time and energy. It is not a dreadful feeling, though. We just go all in. Relationship implications are involved here, too. Between fixated interest and being a so-called overanalyzer or overthinker, this is happening. This is how we do things. I have examples, many different contexts, of teaching the workers about the item and similar items, the similarities and differences of the items. And quite frankly, I love it. I have examples of teaching other consumers about the products as they were in the store looking at the items at the same time. I love it. I can even prompt it and do it without using words. Or sometimes I will just ask them. I can notice they are looking for something. A favorite for me is the vitamin and supplement aisle. There's a lot of biology within this aisle. And a lot of times, people are lost. They're searching for something. And I will just ask them, Oh, iron for your red blood cells, right? And your hemoglobin or respiration. And then wonder or even tell them that hemoglobin and chlorophyll are very similar. Hemoglobin uses the iron, which is what you're after. Chlorophyll uses magnesium. Just remember, too, all the discussion on sunlight and UV light and the healthy benefits that it will provide for hemoglobin. Remember, we can talk endlessly about our interest. And it is endlessly. An example of a of a worker at a store, I taught them what their barcodes mean, their, their price tags, what all the different elements of that tag means, because I looked it up and I learned it. This is very bizarre and really no application in life. It's just a part of it. Hans Asperger's from Asperger's syndrome called children he was researching Little professors. He had nicknames for them. Little professors. That's autism. This is what autism is. That's how you need to understand autism. Forget everything you previously learned and rethink what is autism. See it, not as a disorder. See it 
as a superpower, maybe something that you can't even think about doing, and how society can integrate this. This is how it ought to be. That is how it can be. Look out for future episodes about autism and education and autism and employment on how these things, these two paradigms, are set up for our failure and how society can adjust to improve the situation. Other personal examples of criteria B. Things that don't make sense to me. Pant sizes. It's come to my attention that maybe recently, I don't know, I don't know when it started, quite frankly, that some pant sizes, some pant makers, manufacturers, use alpha for their size. Why would you use alpha for your size? Small, medium, large for pant sizes? This doesn't make any sense. We understand. It's almost universally understood. Numeric sizes for pants. 30, 32, 34. I get that. With small, medium, large. Why would you do that? And finally, something that's Something that I've encountered, I observed, and I think it's strange, is when people make the decision to eat out at a restaurant. You, you make a decision that another human being or a, a collection of human beings that are involved, you're going to have them prepare a meal and just basically feed you. Now, once you make that decision that somebody else this is in somebody else's hands. You forfeit the ability to have an opinion or an expectation of what you're receiving. That's another human being. If, if you don't want that unpredictableness of somebody else preparing or other people as a whole serving you and preparing food for you, then you do it. You don't get to complain. Remember, never underestimate a human's capacity to think. And don't try to change someone with autism just because it offends you. Understand how to utilize this, this phenomena for society, for the person more importantly. If you're listening and enjoy the episode or enjoy the podcast, please feel free to leave a review or rating. In podcasting, reviews, ratings, and downloads are huge. And I very much appreciate your feedback. If you would like to contact me, please do so at info.fromthespectrum at gmail. Dot com. And thank you for listening to From the Spectrum Podcast.